A lot of people expected the uh, dual citizenship saga involving our federal politicians to be over with the uh, High Court ruling uh, last Friday, but it actually opened up the possibility for more MPs to be knocked out because the High Court found that uh, ignorance was not a defence. So even though that Barnaby Joyce and Fiona Nash uh, didn't know that they were uh, dual citizens, it still still meant that they were ineligible to uh, sit in the federal parliament and that citizenship by descent was recognised as dual citizenship. So there is potentially now uh, other MPs in the parliament who uh, knowingly or unknowingly are dual nationals. And uh, we lost a, another MP this week with the no less than the president of the Senate, Liberal Stephen Parry, resigned when uh, on Wednesday after he confirmed that he did hold uh, British citizenship as his uh, father was from Britain. Uh, and now it's it's opened up, uh, made the calls stronger for a audit of the citizenship of all MPs because we were told by Attorney General George Brandis on the Sunday after the High Court decision uh, that there were no more dual citizenship citizens and yet there are and so you know we how else are we going to be sure that you know there's not going to be more well there's no way to know uh, there's plenty of people who now are um, who could be taken up by this um, Penny Wong uh, one comes to mind grew up in Malaysia spent her first 10 years there um, well Stephen Perry is Parry, sorry, is the, the next man to fall uh, to this, but it just shows that the Constitution is a document to be respected, uh, to be venerated and to be looked up to. And it doesn't matter if we're in 2017, uh, this is a document that is a foundational document of our nation and it needs to be respected. And it doesn't matter how many politicians have to go uh, or recontest by elections or or whatever. What needs to be respected is the rule of law and the constitution. And I'm very thankful that this uh, this uh, uh, debacle arose because we can really test the rigors of our um, institutions, uh, the High Court, the Parliament, uh, and to see if they uphold the rule of law. So I personally do think that this is a good thing. But certainly it calls uh, a lot into question. And, and obviously the major parties are resisting this audit that Malcolm Roberts initially pushed because they are scared uh, that the government will collapse. And, and quite frankly, it is on the peril of some kind of collapse at the moment. I really don't mean to dramatise things, but they, uh, with uh, Barnaby Joyce out, they, the uh, Liberal uh, Coalition, Liberal National Coalition, doesn't even have a majority in the House of Representatives. So there certainly is a lot to think about here. The longer that they resist uh, this call for an order, the, the, uh, the longer the public's trust in the politicians is eroded because the, what I've been hearing from, you know, just discussions online and that, that, you know, People, you know, they, they don't care that, uh, you know, this is causing chaos in the government. For them, it's about, you know, the rule of law. You know, politicians uh, make laws that, you know, the rest of us are, are supposed to obey, and yet they can't even follow the most basic law, which is the Constitution. Well, and then George Brandis comes out and says that, uh, is this Section 44, you know, an outdated relic in this, you know, great multicultural society that we live in? So you can't, you know, even as a, as a young lad, well, we'd all realise that you can't change the rules to a game when you're going along to suit your terms. Um, and certainly you can't do away with Section 44 because it's causing you some headaches and uh, you didn't do uh, your due diligence. Uh, so certainly I think that there is some... Uh, what would you call it, elitism here, where the people in the parliament don't think that the rule of law should apply to them uh, as it would uh, to any other Australian. So I certainly agree with your analysis there that in part it's not necessarily about constitutional snobbery, but it's that the one rule of law uh, uh, governs us all. And, and I think it's as simple as that, and that's how most 
uh, middle Australians view this. Uh, and also the other um, politicians calling for an audit are the Greens, who uh, most people have pointed out are actually being the constitutional conservative throughout this whole, uh, whole, whole saga, which is uh, quite ironic. Um, uh, Darren Hinch is also calling for an audit, so is uh, Nick Xenophon, and also some Liberal backbenchers such as uh, Craig Kelly, Eric Betts and Kevin Andrews have also called for an audit. Malcolm Turnbull today said that he'll have an inquiry, but we don't know whether that inquiry would compel MPs to provide uh, documentation, uh, for example. Yes, uh, I think that um, that this could, this audit could end up being a witch trial of some sort where uh, people exact uh, a vendetta on somebody else. Uh, because I'm, you know, the, the accusations uh, will go around in a in a round circle. Uh, there will be wheels within wheels and fires within fires, and I certainly do think that um, this could uh, potentially uh, grind Parliament to a halt. Uh, it could bring an early, probably should, and eventually will uh, bring an early election. And I don't think that most people actually realise the severity of. Uh, this uh, this debate that's going on now, and um, the 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 other thing is uh, with the Greens is what you were saying before. Th this is a rare moment where we can um, I think let go of partisanship and actually realise that the Greens have taken uh, quite a morally righteous stand here. Uh, they have been the ones uh, to respect the constitution and the rule of law, uh, and it has been the major parties that have ignored it, who have disregarded it, and who have felt that it, why should it apply to them? You know, they, they feel that, uh, you know, they're too big for their own boots. You mentioned that an audit could be a witch hunt, but it's already a witch hunt. I mean, it was interesting, Matthias Coleman the other night saying that if, if, uh, any member of the public suspects say, an MP might be a, a dual citizen, they're welcome to investigate, basically inviting the media and other people to you know, dig, uh, dig around. I mean, we already have a uh, witch hunt. And uh, I think an audit would just clear things up uh, once and for all, because this is important for yeah. the integrity of the parliament. I mean, even though it will be you know, messy, you know, we've got to seem to be a nation that is... You know, upholding our constitution, make sure that uh, our laws are being passed uh, by people who are eligible uh, to be there. I mean, even if we do have to go into a into a new election to to make sure that you know this whole uh, sorry saga is cleared up, then so be it. I, I agree. I, I think put the the heat uh, on them, and the heat will melt all concealment. And I think that the, the, the way to put the heat on these politicians to make sure that they follow the rule of law uh, is to conduct an audit. Uh, this was suggested by Malcolm Roberts, the, probably one of the uh, most honourable Section 44 um, you know, uh, politicians who have um, been victim to it. He, he put himself up to the High Court. Uh, he uh, left with his own integrity. And he also said that this uh, audit, uh, he suggested it, kind of got the uh, the stone rolling, as, as if you would say that. Uh, and I think that it is a perfect idea. Uh, we need to uphold uh, the, the sliver of, of integrity that our parliament has. And the way to do that is through an audit, whether or not it ends in another election or not. Upholding uh, the you know, the worth of the parliament, you know, is done through shining a light uh, on the Section 44 and not covering it. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.